Hi, this is Thomas from Apex Game Tools. In this video, we're going to show you how uh, Apex Path and Mechanism can work together. In this video, we're going to use the um, example project that is available on the Asset Store, Apex Mechanism example, and of course also um, Apex Path. So you will need both if you want to follow this example um, on the video. So. The purpose of this example um, is to show you how you can set up Apex Path to work with Mechanism and to use your Mechanism animations to move your units around. We're going to go through uh, three steps. The first is to set up the scene um, with the standard Apex Path functionality. The next is to set up the uh, Mechanism animation. And finally, we will um, see how we can actually make Apex Path use the Mechanism animation for moving the units around. So the first thing is to set up the scene with Apex Path. As you can see, we have a almost blank scene here. Um, we have some ground, and we have a robot that we want to move around. Right, right now, the robot is just well, a robot. It has nothing on it. Um, so the first thing we do is we will actually add the um, quick start navigating unit uh, with selection so that we can select our unit and move it around. That done, um, we also had the game world added so we just want to set up the remaining things. Um, on the game world I want to set up my grid. I'm just going to resize it so that it actually fits the ground that we can walk on. And I'm going to set up my layer mappings. I already defined the layers so I'm just going to set up the mappings here. And there we go. Now that has been set up. And um, I'm just going to tweak a little bit on my unit here. Um, just going to set the slowing distance down to 1, just to make it slow a bit smoother when we get to that. So that's all for now. Now we have uh, the scene set up with Apex Path. So now I can start my scene and I can select my unit and I can move it around. Now obviously there's no animation so it looks a bit silly when the unit moves around like this. So we want to change that next. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add uh, an animation controller. So we're going to go to... oops and animation controller and we can just call it apex mechanism controller there we go and then we can open that one so we have an empty controller and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a state from a blend tree and we can just rename this um, oh there we go um, just going to rename that locomotion there we go now we want to um, control our animation using some parameters that we can pass in so that we can control its speed and the turn rate that it has so we're going to add um, two floats. We're going to add one called speed, and we're going to add one called angle. So this is for linear and angular speed, respectively. The next thing we do, we're going to set up our blend tree. The first, we're going to change the type. I'm just going to change this to 2D freeform Cartesian um, because we are going to have a blend tree with which has both a linear speed component and an angular speed component. So now we have speed speed, we want to have speed angle, and then we're going to add some motions. So add one motion here. The first one here, we're going to just add an idle motion so that our unit is standing still. And one more motion, going to add a walk forward. And we're also going to add two more. One for walking forward and left, and one for walking forward and 
Right. So there we go. Now we have the blend tree set up almost, and we just have to set the values for it. Now, since our unit is um, moving at three meters per second uh, when it's moving or uh, walking at max speed, um, we're just going to set that here. This animation does not ha include running. As you can see, we just have walking for now, just to keep it simple. So I'm just going to set for all the walking stuff here. Just going to set the threshold X to three, so that X controls our walking speed, and position Y controls um, how we turn or when we start to turn. So in this case, I'm going to set it to ten and minus ten. Um, well, actually, reverse minus ten and ten, um, so that the unit will start to turn when um, the angle that it needs to turn is above 10 degrees in or to either side. All right, so um, now we have set up the blend tree. Um, next, we want to um, set up the animator on the uh, unit so that it can use this new animation controller. So on our robot, I'm going to say add component miscellaneous animator. And for the controller, well, we're just going to take the one we just created here. And for the avatar, I am just going to pick robot avatar. That's it. We have our unit set up. Or rather, we have the animation for the unit set up. So now if we uh, run the scene, now we can see that we actually have the unit animated. It has it's uh, it's standing still right now, um, and we can now select it and move it around. But still, it it doesn't actually animate while it's moving. To do that, we need to pass in um, some of these parameters that we created before. So we need to give it a speed and an angle for it to actually start walking or turning. And that we're going to control from a script. So switching to Visual Studio or whatever code it is that you're using, um, as you can see, I've already set up uh, a class for this um, to start out. Called it the Mechanism Mover Component. So this will be the um, mono behavior responsible for having um, our unit animate it wh while it moves. So we will send uh, these parameters to the animation controller to actually have it start walking or animating when it's walking. Now this is also the class that will uh, override the default movement behavior of Apex Path so that it will actually use the mechanism animation for movement instead of um, walking uh, by the default behavior. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to implement the interface needed for this, which is called iMoveUnits. This is the interface that you use to override the default locomotion behavior in Apex Path. So um, let's start defining this class. Now I've cheated a little bit just to make these snippets so I can drag them in. You don't have to watch me write. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to divide, uh, sorry, uh, define a few uh, variables. Um, so the first thing is the animator speed. This will control the actual speed of the animation. Uh, so how fast is the mani uh, mani uh, animation running? Um, so if you want it to run faster, then you can set the speed up. Um, next, we just cache the transformer and the animator to um, make it a little more um, efficient. And finally, we have an ID for the speed and the angle that we will need to control these parameters on the animation controller. So at startup, we're going to initialize all these things. So we just created uh, variables for up there. So all of these set the animation animator speed to our animator speed here. Um, and then we get the IDs for the two attributes, sorry, the two parameters that we created. So the speed parameter and the angle parameter, and we're just going to cache those in these um, 
hashes for faster access. So next, next up we have the actually actual iMove units interface that we need to implement. Now it has two methods, first of which is called move. Um, it will be passed the velocity of the unit and it will also be passed the delta time um, since last update. Now this is not something we're going to use, but we're going to use the velocity. And as you can see, we also need to define this one, a small help class. I'll get back to what that does in just a second. So the first thing we're going to do in uh, our move method is that we're going to get the speed, which is the velocity's magnitude, and we're going to set this on the animator using our speed ID and the value of that. So this will actually set the speed parameter in the animator, uh, telling it what speed we want our units to move at. Next up, we will see how much the unit needs to turn. Now, the first thing we're going to find out is if it's turning left or right. So for this, we have this little helper that will actually return either minus one or one, depending on if we're turning left or right. And then we're going to get the angle that of the turn. So that means the um, way we are facing now and the velocity, the difference in angle between the two um, is what we need to turn. And then we're going to multiply that by the direction so that we can get a, either a positive or a negative angle to turn. And finally, we set this on the animator using the second parameter angle and pass that on there. So now we have both the speed and the angle passed on to the animator. So the final thing we need to do is simply implement the last method of the iMove units interface, which is simply a stop method that we can use to stop. Um, or this will be called when the unit wants to stop. So we simply set the speed to zero. We could also set the angle to zero, but for now we're just going to set the speed so that it will actually enter our idle animation. So that's basically it, or oh, well, almost it. So I'm going to save this um, behavior and then we go back into Unity. I'm just going to select my robot and I'm going to add this we just created. So we have some scripts, scripts, and we have our mobile component right there. And as you can see, we can now set the animator speed to something else than one, which we just want to leave it at one, the default speed of the animation. And now we can run our scene. Now it will actually not work quite as expected just yet, but we will see. So now we can have our unit, we can mark it, and then we can actually move it around. And as you can see, it actually animates the movement of the unit when it moves. However, it is actually cheating right now. As you can see, it does quite sharp turns. And actually, this unit is not capable of doing such sharp turns. The animation of turn left and turn right on this movement is also moving forward while it's doing it. So the reason it is turning this sharply is that we still have the default turning logic active on this component. So to remove that, you could leave it on, of course, that is just fine. Um, if you leave it on, though, you would not have needed to actually take the turn rate of the unit into consideration when doing the animation. So we're actually got just going to want to both move and turn our units using the animation and the limitations that uh, that implies. So I'm just going to remove this now. So now we have removed all the default uh, both locomotion and turning logic from Apex Path, and we are using solely the animator for both. So starting it up again. Now I can select my unit, and now it will actually turn a lot slower, as you can see. So the turn radius of this unit is actually quite wide. As you can see, it can only turn... It can't do a 180. It, can, it has to move forward when it turns.
and that's simply because we just have these animations that we set up. We only set up animations for moving forward and turning left and right while moving forward. So that's basically all there is to it. Um, of course you can get more advanced and probably what you want to do if if you do have the animations for it you would probably want to add animations for doing sharp turns left and right um, so that if the threshold is above well, some angle um, number of degrees you would actually be turning sharply instead of turning while moving. So that's it for now. Um, I hope it all makes sense. Thanks.